This is Metropole Television. This is most certainly Business AM. This is again the sector trends where we get to tell you exactly what is happening in different sectors and industries within the region and Africa as well. Now, SME funding or the performance of the MSME sector in any economy is really a key focus for any government. Towards the end of last year, the president did actually constitute a tax force whose report we are waiting in 2020 to actually tell us exactly what is ailing the MSME sector. Now, if we're talking about a 5.2 percentage performance point in 2019, that tells you if our economy is also performing at 5.8 percent, is that the MSME sector, which is a big focus therefore for the government, is actually not contributing that much to the growth of the economy or the GDP. This morning, we are going to look at exactly organizations within Africa or in the country as well that are actually focused on directing funds to this sector. We are going to talk about funding of MSMEs in Africa. We are going to compare exactly what is happening in different parts of the continent and try and draw those lessons here on exactly what we can do to start unlocking the MSME sector in the country. So this morning, this is going to be that part of the lesson that we would like the tax force probably listening into. All right, we are joined by Eric Mbama. He is the group head of structured finance and products and guarantee for African growth. Mr. Mbama, good morning, sir. Good morning. Somebody would want to know exactly a brief of AGF before we get to talk about MSME funding. Certainly. Yes. AGF was uh, initiated in 2011, uh, started operating the following year. Yes. Uh, so we have been in operation since then, uh, have been able to issue close to a billion dollar guarantees uh, to the banking sector at the continental level. We cover 40 countries. We uh, work with partner financial institutions, mm -hmm. uh, more than 150 yes. are now our partners on the continent. Our objective remains the same. We believe in the role of the private sector. Obviously, yes. we understand the role of the SMEs. You can look at it, statistics and uh, various reports of the World Bank confirm the same uh, assertion, which is that that segment of the industry, of the, 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 the business industry in general, I would say, uh, represent roughly 80% at least yes. of, uh, of the, the, the activity, uh, generally represent 30-40% uh, of the employment. So, so it's important. If you want to trigger development, if you want to trigger growth, if you want to generate jobs and uh, fight poverty, yes. you can't shy away from the SME sector. Yes. I want you to talk to me therefore about the type of MSMEs that you're actually targeting or do you just leave it to your partners to actually choose this type of MSMEs that you target your funding to? That's a good question. Um, our role yes. as uh, an enabler of the environment is not to dictate to banks what they do, yes. but to make sure that they have uh, the energy, that they have the tools available for them to actually have a much bigger impact. Yes. So we're not disrupting the economic rational of their approach. Yes. We, uh, we come there to basically, I would say, uh, leverage of the existing infrastructure to put to use more of the resource already available on the continent. Yes. So if you talk about the sectors that we're looking into, obviously you're going to look into at least um, a couple of the pillars that actually can I would say trigger more development on the continent. We all know the importance of energy yes. to get things done. We know that agriculture, Africa still needs to feed itself yes. in many places. So we're going to look into that. Uh, we're going to look into infrastructure, ICT, roads quality. All of those things increase the transaction costs in uh, every way you yes. look at it. So uh, having an impact in those sectors are something we basically look into. This being said, like I was uh, uh, mentioning it at the beginning, we're su we support the financial um, uh, fabric. Yes. Uh, therefore, we are going to be relatively agnostic. What is important nonetheless is that we're going to have sectors that we avoid, obviously. Yes. Uh, weaponry, ammunition, uh, prostitution, any of those sectors that are not uh, part of our uh, code of ethic will be left aside. Yes. 
Somebody looking at the way the, the African economy is now situated will say that it's a growing economy. I mean, that's the only thing that everybody keeps on saying about Africa, and that we have the potential to, be one, to become one of the biggest continents in terms of our output, in terms of GDP as Africa as a whole. But the blame usually goes to the banking sector as well. This lending sectors of facilities that we do have in Africa is that they're not really attuned to the lower part of the economy, which is where the focus should be. So from where you sit, do you think that our banks have realized that they actually need to channel their energies to the lower part of the economy, which is the MSME sector? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. T thank you for this question. I think that uh, you know, banks are, I would say, economic animals. Yes. Uh, they will be going where they can make money, where they are the minimum, uh, I would say, uh, showstoppers to them realizing their objective, their economic objectives. Yes. So uh, our role as, uh, um, as part of AGF, but I think it is the effort of a few more organizations in the country and on the continental level, is to make sure that we get rid of all the, uh, I would say, uh, I'm talking about showstoppers. Yes. Uh, every blocking factor should be relieved. Binding constraints are various yes. in the continent. I mentioned some of the sectors we're interested in. We look into uh, environmental concerns as well. Beyond, I've mentioned infrastructure, energy, and, uh, and the likes. But uh, Africa is coming to a place where it's growing, but if it wants to keep growing the way, uh, at a pace that is, uh, I would say, able to really impact uh, growth positively, uh, at a pace that will help absorb the demographic trends. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, by 2050, our population will, be, will have almost doubled. Yes. 2.5 billion Africans, the youngest continent in the world. Mm -hmm. So we need to prepare our youth our women uh, as well to take uh, full ownership, uh, full stand, I would say, in uh, what they can do to contribute. Uh, those people create businesses yes. every day. Yes. Uh, and banks will be, uh, I think, in a much stronger position when they have the right kind of tools on the table yes. to mitigate those risks mm -hmm. that they see in uh, a, new, a new brand or new type of consumers yes. or clients for them. Yes. And at the same extension now, everybody is actually talking about the Africa free trade area, continental free trade area, sorry. Are you really targeting your funds also to the banks and other facilities that are actually supporting this one now as we wait for it to actually become fully operational in 2021? Absolutely. I mean, we are, at, we are aligned with this, and I think this was one of the best uh, news for us yes. to see this agreement being uh, uh, ratified and signed by uh, so many uh, countries, and I think actually uh, everybody has signed it almost. Yes. So, so, so that was an excellent uh, news. We definitely support that. We want more trade. Uh, trade between African countries in, uh, is quite insignificant. We're working on a series of projects. I was looking a couple of days again to a project in West Africa yes. uh, that is, uh, again, looking into import substitution. Uh, that's a key area for the continent. The continent tends to export low added value goods and services yes. and uh, importing massively everything else. This is a lot of value that is escaping the grips of the economic, uh, uh, I would say, a tissue in Africa. Yes. And you were mentioning the task force in Kenya. I think it's uh, a great initiative uh, to, to actually help alleviate uh, some of those uh, binding constraints. Yes. And uh, when I look at it, I am lucky to have seen a few other models elsewhere. Yes. And I think we should keep pushing in that direction. We should be looking at how education impacts the skill set yes. uh, of our teams as AGF, AGF pushes that space. Uh, quite a lot. But I think the more we can have governments and private sector coming together to uh, initiate more uh, change in that space, yes. helping government adapt to the requirement of the economy, um, making sure that uh, I was talking about uh, a little bit earlier in this conversation about transaction costs, yes. infrastructure, telecommunication, all of those. Uh, need to be made uh, more accessible and easier to, uh, to, to deal with so that uh, trade can actually uh, reach its full capacity on yes. the continent. I want, I want to bring you here locally, especially when we talk about the ability of the lending banks and also facilities in the country to actually push credit to the MSME sector. I want to really look at exactly what is happening here locally is that now we're talking about the regime of the repeal of the cap on interest rates. For your partners that work with here locally, how did they receive this news and how do you validate now, how do you value now their willingness and ability to actually start now pushing credit to the MSME sector? Absolutely. I, I clearly believe that um, 
I mean, the interest rate is a pricing. Yes. It's literally uh, the result of a risk assessment exercise that the bank should have conducted before uh, sort of, uh, you know, giving its service or offering its service to, yes. to its clients. Uh, capping it, obviously, was uh, maybe based on very good intention, but making their job probably complicated. And uh, uh, I know for a fact that many companies locally have not been able to access finance, and this has certainly curbed the growth in Kenya yes. by uh, a significant margin. So I think that uh, Taking a different route is definitely uh, an, a very important exercise. I think banks are sensitive to this. They probably will be looking into the market differently. Yes. Uh, a few of them have uh, mentioned that this would not change their approach, that uh, you wouldn't see a, a, a massive increase in interest rate uh, as a result of that. So all of this is, is very good news and, and very important, but I think that one of the things that we're expecting as well is uh, having all of us around the table, public and private sector, looking at other considerations as well, mm -hmm. uh, to keep supporting what has been uh, done so far. Yes. Uh, to me, comes to mind immediately the collaterals, the high level of collateral expected, especially from uh, young uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, we know that when it comes to women, generally, depending on where you're talking in the in the world and uh, and in Africa, but they have a harder time uh, accumulating the assets that they need to actually be able to back the collateral requests. Yes. So that's a consideration to be to be had in mind and to help improve the impact on interest rate of having guarantees in place. And during all the time since 2016, when the the, the interest rate were capped, we uh, since that time uh, saw in our clients. Uh, here uh, as well, uh, that they were quite kind of happy to benefit from the guarantee yes. structure that we're putting uh, in place and schemes that we're making available to them. Yes. Uh, because this was a way for them to uh, mitigate the risks that they're being exposed to. Yes. So, uh, so, so in a nutshell, I think it's, a, it's, it's a good news, but uh, we need to keep pushing and supporting this task force yes. to keep exploring uh, the multiple venues yes. uh, that can be used to keep making finance accessible to the uh, yes. majority. I, I want to continue throwing a spotlight on the Kenyan MSME sector when it relates to funding it as well. I know you see it as a position that actually enables you to look at working modules in other parts of the African continent. Do you think there's a model somewhere in terms of lending to the MSME sector that actually Kenya can look into and start impacting on its sectors here locally? There is no simple answer, but uh, I think that uh, obviously the impact of technology, yes. uh, we support innovation massively at AGF, and uh, not just because we like it and because we are in Kenya, the country of M-Pesa, but because we live in a, a sort of uh, I would say leapfrogging, yes. uh, generally. If we want uh, to be able to catch up with the rest of the world, uh, with the, most, di the more dynamic, uh, most dynamic economies in the globe, we need to do that. Um, innovation has been important. When you look at, uh, for instance, the reverse factoring, yes. uh, that's an interesting mechanism that allows uh, 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 suppliers to have access more I and mean, faster and uh, quicker by transferring the risk to the client, yes. their client, they actually can have access to financing. Yes. Those are, I don't believe there's going to be a revolution, but we need to apply an evolution and make sure that we do have, we apply small changes here and there to, uh, to increase that access. Um, we need to look into Africa, but I think that we are uh, endowed with a globe yes. and we need to keep looking at what's happening elsewhere. Yes. Uh, I was recently in Malaysia. Uh, in uh, uh, a small city uh, literally built called Magic. And, uh, and, and Malaysia kept experimenting. It's fostering innovation, creating opportunities for multiple and various parts of uh, the economy and uh, the entrepreneurial uh, uh, type of uh, uh, ecosystem to actually flourish and come up with innovation in ways things are being done. Yes. Um, in most countries in Africa, maybe that's going to be a, a, on my, my last point on that topic, uh, you're going to have a lack of proper credit bureau. When we do our business, we look at a series of gaps, and this is one of the most important ones, a uh, gap of information. It is difficult for a financial institution that is regulated by uh, a series of uh, uh, international standards such as ourselves or the top players in the industry. It is difficult for them to avail the needed capital if information is missing yes. from small players. Yes. 
maybe there's something to be done. I believe in ICT, and uh, sorry to talk about uh, that as well, but I was in Singapore. Uh, by, uh, in 30 minutes, you can literally create your company, 30 minutes. That's a record time, isn't it? It is a record it's time. A record time. It means that you're connecting databases all yes. over the place. Yes. Uh, certainly, there can be many issues to consider when doing that. But nonetheless, this is enabling the environment in a quite a unique way. And this is helping fill in this gap, yes. uh, this information gap. Uh, we have talked about education as well, but this is maybe a different section of your concerns. But I do believe that uh, Kenya should keep with this energy and, uh, and vibe yes. and, and keep leading the way by exploring new frontiers, yes. uh, especially in technology. Yes. So another pertinent question when it comes to AGF really is how you can therefore be able to evaluate your effect within Africa since 2011 to date as we start 2020. Look, I think when an organization has been in operation since uh, seven years and a half, almost eight years now, mm -hmm. uh, has been able to issue close to a billion dollar guarantees, is supporting 60%, uh, as 60% of its portfolio is yes. made up of uh, uh, youth, uh, business owners, etc. I think it shows vision as well, because we know that uh, in less than 30 years, half of the, the African population, uh, almost half of it will be uh, youth under 16. So the future of our continent really relies on empowering that uh, uh, segment of the population. Yes. When we think of women, we're supporting uh, uh, the African Development Bank as, uh, uh, as basically mandated AGF uh, a couple of months ago over the summer to actually uh, energize and uh, allow the uh, affirmative uh, action for women in finance yes. uh, to uh, be able to actually deploy its capacity on the continent. Yes. That's a key project. Being in a potential to uh, support the deployment of capital for a, a few billion dollars so much more than what we have done in so many years. Yes. This shows trust. And maybe uh, to, to, to finish on that point, uh, you're asking uh, you know, how I see our performance of the years. Yes. When uh, uh, you are um, the only guarantee fund rated AA uh, minus by Fitch, and, uh, and, and being uh, assessed by others uh, to keep over the years, we conducted the same rating. I think this sends a signal and yes. uh, tells you where we're standing yes. and uh, definitely where we're headed. Yes. So, Mama, I gotta ask you this question though, that critics of funding into Africa saying it's not just about the money that we need. It's not just about the money that's going to unlock the potential of the MSME sector in Africa. Mm -hmm. No. That there are things that have to be done, even if you come with a fund, you gotta tell us exactly what we need to do on the ground before you can actually start that for pushing these funds to the, to the MSMEs and the youth as well in Africa. Do your partners, are your partners concerned therefore that at the end of the day just about the money or accessibility of these funds? It's not just about the billion US dollars that we're talking about. It's about creating the enabling environments therefore for us to start realizing the potential of the businesses in Africa. Is that happening from your partners as well? It is, yes. it is, and, uh, and, and in, in many ways. Uh, I, I was mentioning to you that we act on two main pillars. Yes. Uh, we provide guarantees. Yes. That's uh, one of the key, uh, the key series of products we, we bring on the market. Yes. But we also push uh, tremendously when it comes to capacity development. Yes. Uh, you need, your main asset is people. Yes. Your people need to be able to run the businesses. Many people start businesses, but as you know, statistics talk about it. Uh, close to 50% of uh, uh, new initiative disappear uh, within the first year. Mm -hmm. uh, those are important statistics to keep in mind. Uh, so you're talking about the enabling environment. I think, I think that's absolutely it. But I also believe that strategic partnership uh, in Africa uh, should bring Kenyan companies to be uh, to see new markets open to them, yes. uh, integrating new value chains and growing, climbing uh, basically the ladders when it comes to the value chain they are already part of. Yes. Uh, you need to enable demand in the country to be directed toward the supply, uh, service supplied by Kenyans yes. uh, on this continent or at least companies operating out of this, uh, this country or the region. So it's a collective effort. Uh, that we need to do. I see there the Ministry of Education 
since early. I see a lot of infrastructure. Yes. I see healthcare. Kenya is a great destination for healthcare yes. uh, on the continent. I don't think it was the case a couple of decades ago, but work has been done and the level of service delivered to, uh, to people make it so uh, it, it becomes uh, a no-brainer to come to Kenya. I think recent statistics, sorry I cannot bring up the name of the institution, yes. were ranking Kenya as uh, a top destination in Africa and uh, in the top uh, 15 or 30 in, in the world. So I think you need to keep working on enabling this environment. I think that it's difficult sometimes when you're in a country to realize progress made, but uh, that those efforts need to be uh, sort of maintained. Yes, everybody listening to you will be asking what are the plans for Kenya come 2020? That's really good. Everybody wants to hear talked about that. What do we expect for Kenya in 2020? Um, I think a lot, a lot can be uh, <laughs> can be expected from Kenya. No, yes. seriously, yes. I think I've seen. Uh, I'm seeing the uh, Kenyans going outside. Yes, uh, I'm seeing. I'm, I'm talking about the financial uh, services yes. sector. Yes. I think that you have uh, built a relatively strong base that should uh, be, from my perspective, directed to the rest of the, the continent. Kenyan banks have an African DNA. That's not the case of all banks operating in the continent. So yes. they have uh, the wonderful opportunity to look at the glass as half full versus some others uh, uh, perspective and that you should leverage of it. Yes. Mr. Bobo, thank you very much for joining us at Metropole TV this morning. Thank right. you for having me. We'll call you back again before the end of 2020 so we can get talking about funding of MSMS in Africa. Noted. Now that's exactly what we had for you this morning. Remember, you can actually catch a recap of this conversation. Just go to Metropole TV Kenya on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. And the good thing about YouTube is it's going to actually take us a couple of minutes back and start listening into exactly what Mr. Boma has to say about funding of African MSMEs. Now, that's business I am for you. I'll be coming back at 11, 12, at 1 from Metropole News. My name is Simba. Elijah Charles Kiyaki. Good morning.